Tony Atlas, certainly no question about that. An outstanding bit of competition, I might add. Well, we're talking about uh, Bobby Heenan and uh, the entire situation. I want to take a moment, if I can, to talk to uh, Ole Anderson because I'm kind of curious about a few things and I just want to make sure that I understand everything totally and completely. Now, Mr. Anderson, I, I will admit this, Mr. Paul Boss certainly verified the fact that you are a man of your word. No question about that. Well, I know he made a comment about the way I wrestle sometimes, and I know you certainly don't like it either. I can't do much about the past. I can't change that, but maybe I can change the future a little bit. You know, I'll tell you something that's happened that I never really expected before. I've wrestled for a long time, and I've never, for instance, I've never been able to get on a microphone and be able to say anything out with a lot of people, without a lot of people yelling and hollering and booing me. But I'll tell you, last night was the first time in my life that I ever felt that maybe uh, there was a few people that were with me. There were some people that actually cheered me. There were some people that actually applauded for me. And I'll tell you the truth. It felt kind of good. I kind of liked it. And I don't mind. I don't mind. I like it. Let's cheer for a minute. I like it. So I told Armstrong, I said, you got something? I'm just waiting around for my mouth, all right? Okay. So, Luke, I'm I'll be done in a second. I'll be done in a second. You know, it's, a, it's the, first time, the first time I ever really felt like, like maybe I have a few friends. Because a lot of time I didn't have anybody at all. A few friends? If you yeah. have a few friends, let me help you. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Wait just a minute, Bill Howard. And it is now Brannigan charging in there. And Brannigan apparently has a... Brass knucks or something, and he's and it is Ole Anderson catching Brannigan now, and uh, we've got uh, everything's broken loose here. Everything has broken loose here. Well, you know what that was all about. You know what that was all about. But I'm gonna tell you, Heenan, it ain't gonna hurt. You send a lot of people out here to do your dirty work for you, Heenan, but it didn't work. Now I was standing right there and watched what happened. Only the man took care of himself. I don't care how much money you pay, and he had a foreign object on his hand. Did you see what it was, did, Gordon? It like but it didn't get now. done, Heenan. It didn't get done, and it ain't gonna get done. I'll tell you what. I, before, I was after Cox, and I was after Land. But Heenan, you're the one that's behind us. You can't fool me. The kid's got a couple of bucks in his pocket. He's got brass knuckles. You send these guys out here, you're running scared. Well, Friday night, you're going to be plenty scared. Because Friday, you're going to be right in this cage. Right here, locked up in his cage. You're going to be hanging over that ring. And we get done going through Cox and going through Land. They're going to let you down, let your body down. And we're going to open up that gate, and then we're going to beat your butt from one end to the other. And I told people, you can go by my word. And this is one time I'm giving it to everybody in the state of Georgia and the whole country. You come on Friday, because I promise you one thing. If it's the last thing I do, we're going to kick somebody from one end of that building down to the other. It's going to be Cox, and it's going to be Lad, and then we're going to let Heaton down. We're going to let Heaton down from up there in that ceiling. I got, I'm telling you what, I'm going to kick your stand myself if I have to. Now you know exactly how I felt. You know how I felt about it all the time. You were in my shoes. Put it there. You've got it Friday night. You've got it. You showed the people not only of Georgia but of the world what kind of low-life dog you are. You know, Ernie Ladd took this man out of the gutter. A man that couldn't even win a match by himself. Ernie Ladd put you up above championship material, Ole Anderson. And what thanks does he get? He gets stabbed in the back. You know, a lot of things are happening around Georgia right now. Killer Carl Cox is on the rampage as Georgia champion. And I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you take a good look at Bob Armstrong's face? He looked like he got in a fight and got the worst in. And I think in my mind that on down the line, Bob Armstrong and Ole Anderson,
It's not only going to be a few scratches on your face and a few black eyes. It's going to be a few teeth missing, a few bones broke, and Bobby Jaggers will be there to give it to you. Thank you very much, and we'll be back in just a moment. Game of Edward. Telling you what him and Hanson are going to do. I'll tell you what you're going to do next week. You're going to step in that ring. You're going to bring the belt. But when it's all over and done with, Mr. Anderson, you and Hanson, you better get a bunch of friends to carry your busted carcasses out of that ring because next week you're going to be looking at new Georgia champions. But the important thing on my mind is Friday night at the Atlanta City Auditorium. Tape fifth, brass nuts match, right? Ole Anderson and Hanson against the superstar and, Keller and Ernie Ladd. I doubt if Hanson and uh, Ole Anderson will be able to defend a title here on TV. Now, we're going to beat him up pretty bad Friday night, but we're going to leave just a little bit left for television Saturday. And then Tommy Rich, you've made that ludicrous statement that if you beat Carl Cox, you won five minutes with me. Well, maybe I don't even care about five minutes with you. Maybe I won't even go with those stipulations. Maybe I'll just want you after the match any way it goes. You know, I'm tired of having my back pushed to a corner. I'm tired of people giving me bad accusations, people knocking me. You know, I got five minutes. I tore that patch off your face, and you felt pain like you never felt before. For five minutes, I'm going to do that next Friday night. Win or lose, you're scarred for life, punk. We'll find out Friday night at the Atlanta City Auditorium. That's will be one fall with a TV time limit. Introducing first from Tampa, Florida, weighing in at 320 pounds, Sterling Golden. Sterling Golden. His opponent from Riverdale, Georgia, weighing in at 235 pounds, Marvin Turner. Marvin Turner. Marvin Turner going up against Sterling Golden. who uses that uh, golden squeeze so very, very effectively, using a powerful sledgehammer blows to the back of Marvin Turner. Smashes him down once again. Turner on the canvas, in the blue trunks. Sterling Golden brings him up. He's a running backbreaker. Turner in trouble, trying to get over to those ropes if he could. And it is Sterling Golden catching him with the golden squeeze. And he is conceding. The referee calling for the bell. It is all over for Marvin Turner. Sterling Golden moving very effectively. A man of awesome strength. No question about that. Let me take just a moment to talk to him. Obviously, uh, Mr. Turner could only take so much of that golden squeeze, and then he had to give up. Let me tell you what it's all about, Gordon Sully. About five weeks ago, a man named Sterling Golden came storming Norman in Orlando, Georgia. Everybody's been running scared. They've been feeding me this great bee meat every week on TV. I want the best now. All these superstars, they've been hiding in the eye of the storm, brother. I've been whipping everybody out here, and I want only the best competition from now on. I'm getting sick of this. I don't even get a workout in the ring. And the $1,000 challenge for the Golden Squeeze is still up. Anybody, anybody that can break the squeeze, I will shut out $1,000 if you got the guts to get in the ring. Well, indeed, one of the critical points. I think it's really in any professional sport. This is the, the knee or the ankle is one thing that every athlete uh, fears injury in. Lock up collar and elbow. It'll be interesting to see how Fergie mounts his attack on uh, Hart, whether or not he goes for that knee. Fergie tying up the arm of Bret Hart. Hart, good takedown. Hart, one of 12 children. He is a second generation wrestler. You remember he and Buzz Sawyer wrestled uh, to a draw in an outstanding match here on Georgia Wrestling. <laughs> Pleasure to see my good friend R.T. Williams here watching the matches today from the sports arena here at Channel 17. And it is uh, Hart keeping the side headlock on Carl Perky into a hip lock takedown. Hart, who has changed his methodology considerably uh, thus far in the match 
He has uh, taken a very defensive stance. He's been letting Fergie come to him and hoping that Fergie will make the mistake. And of course, uh, that is one excellent theory in wrestling. Let your opponent move in, and sometimes the deeper in he gets, the more trouble he's in. All right. He's out of it. Hard moving. section Hart drops to both knees snap mare but Hart comes out of it before the count of three Fergie moves in ties him up once again back to their feet once again and it's Hart trying to power out of that uh, front face lock Hart battling, trying to get out of it. And it is Hart. Brought back into it as Fergie gets some extra leverage that time. Being warned by the referee for his tactic. And again. Fergie got that extra leverage that time, forced to break it. Fergie with a forearm to the side of the jaw, Bret Hart. Fergie maintaining the front face lock. And it's Hart coming out, full arm drag and twist. more punishment now to Carl Fergie. Fergie in the orange trunks. Caught on that arm drag and twist. Fergie one to the midsection. Trying to break that hold if he can. Hart now with a step over. On the arm. Bears down on him and so uh, Fergie has some problems now. Bret Hart, who is a uh, provincial champion in Canada in amateur wrestling. This point in time, has Fergie in trouble. Fergie still on the canvas. Hart continues to punish the left arm of Carl Fergie. strategy becoming apparent here. Fergie goes for the midsection. Whips Hart into the far turnbuckle and Hart could be in trouble again. Hart comes off, caught again. Powers out as Fergie's beginning to press that advantage. And Hart has got problems because he does not have that much lateral movement. Fergie again closing in on Bret Hart. Young man who now makes his home in the great Mount Montana. Arm with Fergie into that uh, far turnbuckle, catches him a hard, blasting right hand. Using the flat of the foot to the midsection, catches him again. The side of the face, Fergie, back on his feet. Hart catches him a good flying drop kick. Hart catches him with another good flying drop kick, and Fergie has got to be in trouble here. Hart, well executed backdrop. Hart comes across, cross body block. Well.